Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Phil Dimitratis here and uh, what I wanted to do is one of my students uh, was struggling a little bit on working on the uh, shell of the turtle. So what I thought I'd do is just sketch out a bunch of shells real quick. So um, this is going to be a short demo. It's going to be in the neighborhood of like 20, maybe 30 minutes long. And um, this is when I get stuck on a problem when I'm drawing or designing, the first thing I do is I just go back to basics and I do a bunch of silhouette studies from a side view. And um, even though it might seem very long and sort of arduous task, that sort of bugs me a little bit because I come back to this point of view in is as an artist and in life and anything you, that you want to do, if you want to get better at it, you have to uh, endorse more repetition and you have to spend more time drawing and sketching. So not always going to come up with the, I mean, that's the whole purpose of being a designer, right? Is to design. You're never going to come up with the first idea the first time. It never works that way. And that's a difference between a pro and a beginner right there. Okay. So when I hear students go, well, I already did faces and I don't want to have to do turtle sketches of shells. Well, you know what? Tough beans. Go out there, be committed to it, do the work because you know what? Everything I sketch like this in a side view comes back to always benefit me tenfold. So once I start sketching my character turn in a three quarter view, I have all these sketches to look at. I can print them out. I can, I, and actually your brain and your eyes sort of remember them. Because remember, part of cognitive learning process is, which you know, like for example, when I was a kid, I learned how to draw Mickey Mouse because I learned that there were basically uh, four key circles, a circle for the head, two circles for the ear, a circle for the main, uh, the main nose shape, and then a circle on top, which was the nose. That's Mickey. Okay, so uh, your, your mind in your hand sort of, in essence, well, not your hand, but your mind remembers these things that you're drawing. So, you know, when I was talking to that student, I did this demo and I wasn't going to render it and put it up. And I thought, you know what, why not? Maybe it's not, um, it, it's not filled with a ton of information. I'm just sitting here sketching. But the thing that I'm doing right now is I'm really thinking about shape and pattern. Okay, because when you look at a turtle shell, turtle shells have basically there are a variety of different sizes. There's a huge difference in reference between looking at and what I, I might go back and I'll open up the reference in the beginning of this video and show you. But there's a huge difference um, in a sea turtle, a land turtle, a, a desert tortoise, um, and and all these different variants. So by doing this, I get to go in here and I get to start thinking about. You know, will there be banding straps? Will there be circles? Will there be squares? Will I have something that's crustaceous? All those different elements will come into play as I'm sketching here, okay? So, if you look at this video and you're in my character design class and you're like, well, I just want to skip the shell and go and start drawing something. Well, I hope you have a lot of practice because you're more likely to fail than you are to succeed because you haven't given it any time and thought, okay? And you know what, speaking of that, one of the, the big things that I notice um, what is the? I get this question sometimes from students like, what's the difference between class and what's the difference between working as a professional? Well, working as a professional, first big difference is you're already working eight to 10 hours a day. So you're sketching all the time and you become, you immediately become a lot faster in your development of sketching and drawing, okay? The other thing is, is that professionals come up with multiple options to please their art directors or directors, okay? And that's the one thing I notice that's different with students. The students sometimes don't want to have to take any suggestions from their instructor because they get this little sort of ego or attitude of like, well, that would mean more work. And, and then when I hear that, I sort of come back with this mentality of, fine, do the work. Uh, if you want to get to that upper level and you want to compete against other artists that are working at Disney or DreamWorks or, or television animation or Warner Brothers, you have to be at that upper level. It means you not only have to have the talent and the skill, you have to know how to design, you have to know how to come up with variations, okay? Which I'm going to let you on a little piece of gold here, okay? And I say this in my class, right? When I was working full time, and I still do a bunch of freelance, okay? One of the things that I do is I'm a heavy believer in always giving my art director, my director, story soup, whoever it is I'm working under, I always give them multiple options, okay? Options are gold because options show, so that's a piece of gold right there, okay? Not many people are gonna tell you that. In fact, I have a lot of students that go to four-year schools and they don't even learn that because some of your instructors don't have enough industry experience, okay? Which is just the truth, sorry to say, but it is. So. 
options. The fact that I'm doing this right here and you're sitting here watching it tells me that you care. And it's the little things, like I've told you before, that add up to small percentages that add up to 15 or 20% that make your work look a little bit better than the other person. Okay, that's your goal when you go to apply at a company. So I don't mean to go on this rant, but I have to do a voiceover because I drew this in class and I had Moby playing in the background and YouTube will can the video if I don't voice over. So, but it's an important rant because I'm talking about something that is extremely important. And the funny thing is, is I have these discussions with my students and they always sort of fight me on some of these things. And the funny thing is, is the small percentage of students that listen to me, that do the extra thumbnails, that do the extra silhouette shapes, that think about, you know, for example, on this, we're doing turtle shells. I could do a whole page on feet. There's all kinds of different feet uh, for turtles. So that's gonna be extremely important for me as well. I mean, just talking about feet, you know, what about, um, I've seen turtle feet from desert, tur desert tortoises that have like really thick padding on their feet because they're walking around on scorched ground. So part of the turtle has evolved with part of their environmental conditions over the years and they've changed, okay? Sea turtles don't have round padded feet to walk on sand. They have flippers that allow them to swim through the ocean faster, okay? So um, what's gonna be the difference between a turtle you might find in the Bahamas versus a turtle you might find in Hawaii? There's gonna be total differences, and as an artist, you have to understand those variants, okay? So what about a crustaceous foot? What about a foot of a turtle that um, has been like has like nodulars or little things growing on it. In fact, that's what I was thinking right here. I was thinking of a turtle body or shell. This guy walks around in the Amazon and maybe he has like vines and plant growth and other things. So even though I might not like the design, this sketch acts as a stepping stone for me to get to a better design. Because at the end, when you see the design with the head in there and all plugged together, what are you really noticing? You notice all these little attributes that come together. You notice the head, you notice the feet, you notice the detail on the shell. Well, the fact that I took an extra 20 minutes out of my busy schedule to go and do this indicates that I have a little bit more concern for what my final outcome is gonna be. It's just that simple. That's the way it works, that's the way that drawing works, okay? So, it's funny, because I was even having, uh, I, I have a student of mine who's extremely talented, but, He's really gifted at Photoshop, but he sucks at drawing. And he's trying to get better at drawing. And every time I see him in his sketchbook, the one thing that he's doing is he's always going into rendering. And I said, why are you rendering? That's a totally different issue. That's totally separate from drawing. Drawing is about foundational shape. It's about um, it's about understanding shapes from multiple point of view. It's the rules of draftsmanship and perspective. Which brings me to, I thought I'll mention this now, I'm working on another video to put together for you guys because I've had a lot of students um, at school and also some ex-students from CGMA where I used to teach on the side and some ex-students from Laguna College of Art and Design. You know, people that have, that have reached out and they always say to me like, hey, you know, I wanna really focus on something that I'm working on and how can I get better, what can I do? So I thought about doing a video series. It's just taking a little bit more time than I thought on what are the key fundamentals that you have to understand as a base artist, okay? And listing those fundamentals and talking about them. And then in relationship to that will be uh, another video that deals with, I was talking to one of my old students, Henrik. Henrik, if you're out there, I'm giving you a shout out there in Brazil, okay buddy? Um, and we were talking about how does he prepare a portfolio and how does he look for different jobs, especially being in another country, which is also a really important discussion to talk about because you have to think about a lot of different factors in there. So anyway, back to this. So I don't care if you're working in game design. I don't care if you're working in animation. Um, I don't care if you want to do your own children's books and start your own properties, okay? Your goal is to become efficient at drawing and to become a good designer. And the difference between good designers is good designers do a lot of the homework, they, do a, they gra gather a lot of reference, and they spend time thinking about what their final design is gonna be, and they find the smallest and little ways to add incremental changes that make their drawings or designs better. Boom, it's that simple, okay? And the guy, or the student, or the artist, the he, the she, whoever it is, the person that spends the least amount of time and cranks out a design and doesn't go through and think about it, and problem is, there's usually two problems. One, you have ego. Number two, you're lazy. And so guess what? You're already setting yourself up to fail. 
because you're not going to the extra effort that you need to go to to get work done. For example, I really like this last sketch I did right here for a couple reasons. One, I like the angular shapes against the contour. So that's a, a principle of composition, which is straights against curves, okay? So by doing that, I get this sort of trapezoid feel on the shell that reminds me of like, you know, some type of rock and shell, and this is pointing me in the direction of this turtle being some type of old crustaceous turtle that lived in a longer, you know, back many, many years ago. Also the feet, look at how I extended out the feet. I like these sort of large spread out feet. They look a little bit more clumpy, they're a little bit more round, and then these feet are gonna counter angle part of the uh, the angular shell up there, okay? So as I continue sketching, I might look back at a couple sketches here, and to me there's already a difference because my first couple sketches weren't nearly as loose, and now I'm getting in the rhythm, in the mode, and I'm considering what things look at. So, you know, if I can go into this, and if I can do a page of silhouettes, let's say it, it takes you an hour. An hour is not a lot, not a long time, folks. I mean, if you add up the time that you watch TV, you spend on your cell phone, you text people, uh, an hour is nothing, you know? I mean, you know, um, I'm gonna have to create another video I wanted to do is about schedule, because I have a really intense schedule in, in my life, in the things that I do. Teaching full time, um, being a dad, taking care of parents, um, and all that other type of stuff, and then finding time to do videos for students and YouTubes, which, for, excuse YouTubes, for YouTube, in which, you know, I don't even really have to record the demos, but I'm doing it because I want my students to grow, and, I mentioned this before, I think it's sort of my responsibility as an educator to be out there and sharing information with this, like this with you. So one day, when it makes me really excited, is when I have a student that lands a job at a company and I get that text or that email and I know that I was a part of that. I helped them get there somehow. I made them a better artist or designer. There's something about that that's also part of a pay it forward sort of mentality. So anyway, with this guy, I'm thinking of curving the shell, angling the feet, right? So gives me another direction to go on, okay? And I like, look at the underneath shell, that hard sort of angle in there. And then I like the idea if there's angled feet, maybe I have flowing rhythm patterns on top of the shell that make it a little bit more accessible. Okay, why not? All right, so let me add a little bit more information here. Um, sometimes I'll do this and then I wanna skip forward, go back, because I'm, I don't think about a pattern in detail yet, but then I wanna come back to it, so. What's funny is I'm looking, it's funny, I'm looking back now at this and I'm looking up in the upper right hand corner here. I really like that curvy shell there. I really do. It, it really gave me another thought or direction of these round sort of turtle humps, you know. Let me scale this guy down a little bit, get him in here. Okay. So let's keep going. All right. Get fired up, right? Have a cup of coffee, sit and draw, sketch, come up with solutions, you know. One of the things I do in the morning is uh, when I get up early and I sketch my sketchbook, sometimes I sketch here on YouTube. I was doing the, the morning sketch. I'm gonna try to get more of those done for you. Um, is I, I watch a couple motivational videos because I'm just as human as everybody else and sometimes I have a bad day. And when I watch, when I watch a motivation video, you know, it gets me to think about obstacles and things I have to work on or change in my life and how am I gonna do those things. How do I make myself better? And, you know, one of them is just sitting down here on the monitor and letting go and just drawing and not being worried if I'm going to have a successful day, a bad day, a good day, whatever. It's just just sketching, letting it go, you know. Um, the same thing in my sketchbook. Not every single page needs to be a excellent page. You know, I'm going to have bad drawings. You should have bad drawings because if you're not getting bad drawings, then you're doing the same thing over and over and you're drawing the same thing on a repetitious basis and you're not giving yourself other options. For example, options in exploring your draftsmanship, options in uh, stretching out form and shape, options in using different type of mediums and techniques. Um, you know, try marker in your sketchbook, try Prismacolor pencil, try Cole erase pencil. Um, 
the other day my daughter had a, a, a set of pen pencils that I hadn't really seen before. They were something off Amazon, and they when you when you draw with them and put down, you can then come back. With, they're like a water-based pencil, so you can come back with a light um, piece of of of. Uh, excuse me, like a, I was thinking of a, of a water brush, you know if those are, it's like a brush tip but it has water inside or it can come back with even a watercolor brush very lightly, not too much water and then you could smear the pencil. So again, more technique, something else to learn, another way to add to your, your work here. So this shell, I was thinking about the other shell I did and I wanted to add more bumps to it. I want to make it more wavy. I'm trying to go, one of the things I'm thinking in the back of my mind is going from large round shape to a medium shape to a small shape, okay? The other thing I've noticed when I'm looking at some reference that I had for turtles is I noticed that their shells tend to be at an angle. And they're at an angle because their front legs are more like their walking and maneuvering legs that allow them to lower their body and, and allow them to eat. So I, I sort of like the thought of what if I have more room here and then the, the hind legs tend to be these sort of smaller legs sort of tucked in. That's a whole nother discussion too in itself is when you look at turtles, they have this sort of some have this curved shell in a protection plate underneath so they can bring their legs in a little bit tighter okay um and some don't have as much protection plate underneath i think that's probably going to be derivative based on their environment and the conditions in which that species or animal has grown up in right so so i like this shell it's lots of angles with one nice wrapping round shape on the top Okay. Large shell underneath. Or protective plate, I should say, of some kind. And then I'm gonna sort of cheat in here and figure out a way, maybe the back leg, the hind quarter leg sort of push out. And then there's, you know, I'm thinking a larger front leg that's available for the turtle. Um, yeah, I just want to get room for the leg in here. Large leg. So I like, you see that position there? Not really gesture. Can't really, it's really hard to have a gesture in a turtle, but um, you can. But I like that angle. See how the, the leg is in the back there? And then I have, now I'm going to have the front leg sort of push itself up. So to me, this would be the stance of one of two characters. Um, with the angles in here, this could be a bad guy, you know? Or... Um, this could also be like a young guy who's very eager and uh, you know wants to, to do more inside his his tribe or his village or whatever or his community and he has that sort of like his head is up so it could be to me that body shape would fit one of those two characters right there oops I hate it when I do that something happened my toolbar disappeared which I've noticed whenever I'm using Camtasia recording. Um, and at the same time, I have Sketchbook open and I get past like a 20, 30 minute mark in video. Um, the memory falls a little short because it's all being allocated to Camtasia. And um, my computer will skip a little bit, you know? And for example, the toolbar, the toolbar will go away. It tells me it's there, but it's not there, you know? So, all right, let's, uh, Come over here. Let's get another guy in here. So after you do this for a while, you start to really feel like like the angle, like the thick to thin. You want to play with it. You want to make it interesting. You know what I mean? You want to have something that just becomes a little different. Um, I don't know. I like that. To me, it's fun getting to, to try to think about curved lines, tapered angles, thick to thin, what I mentioned before, curves against rounds, different types of patterns, all those little elements add up to helping in establishing a little bit more about what I'm sketching and creating. All right, while this is record, while this is going here, I'm just stepping away for two seconds to turn on my fan because it's getting hot in my little studio. So give me one second. There. 
All right. I have a pet peeve when I'm sketching. If um, it starts to get warm, I always have to be like in a cool condition. You know what I mean? Um, I don't like the thought of being warm or feeling like your hands are getting clammy or especially my forearms are on my, my workspace or my table and I feel like they're touching down too much. Um, don't like that at all. All right. See, I like that guy. He's chunky. He's got this big body. He's got these sort of curvy feet, you know? That's fun. Something different to add in the in the mix. So, and another thing as I'm sketching this, another thing I was talking to a student about the other day, the student said, sometimes I see, you, like I was sketching my sketchbook, and he said, sometimes I see you sketch in your sketchbook and you're not doing all these studies. And, I may, and my comment back was, but I've been, number one, I've been working in a professional environment in a studio since 1997, 96, okay? So um, that's after I graduated college. A little bit after that, I got my first job and was working at Sony, children's television division, okay? So, you know, that's, you know, I'm just going to round it up, that's 20 years of drawing experience and design experience I'm going to have on you, the student. So sometimes in my little Rolodex in the back of my head, I think of a solution faster because I've been doing this a lot more. And one of the things that I always try to do, like I mentioned earlier, is give my client or art director or boss or whoever it is multiple decisions, uh, excuse me, multiple options to encourage their final decision. Okay, so... Um, any little small things that I can do, like for example, I remember when I was working at Big Idea, which are the VeggieTale people, okay? Um, and I worked, I went over there and worked under a gentleman by the name of Michael Spooner, who's an amazing artist. And one of the things that um, I learned from Michael that I also learned from another gentleman whose name is Robert St. Pierre, is that um, doing little sketches and thumbnails was a standard in the industry and providing that information um, on a review with your art director and director was extremely important. And not only that, but matching to that was having the reference. And who would have ever thought that you should be having put up multiple pages of reference? And so later, you know, when I was at it, it, it Sony TV, uh, so it's excuse me Sony Children's Television doing environments I did a couple for Jumanji and then I worked on a show called Dilbert which everybody knows right those are my first like two productions getting involved working and in sketching and Jumanji was more like a freelance I was mainly on Dilbert okay and um, when I was sketching all those environments there wasn't time to get, grab a bunch of reference your reference were previous environments from the show but after that when I left I went to work at MGM and I worked with this awesome individual named Phil Mendez and um, um, still admire Phil and he taught me so much just being around him, such a positive attitude and um, actually was an, an animator and character designer and storyboard artist director who worked under a couple of the nine old men back in the day at Disney and a really fantastic guy. He, um, we used to talk about the importance of like having all this reference and in your mind like when you before you start drawing looking at what you're going to do and we would have boards of like southern houses and southern plants and southern trees everything that dealt with our show and you know the same thing with michael so i realized like man like no one ever taught me that in college we, we would mention like oh where's your reference but you didn't have to collect pages of it in the studio in the studio environment I mean, we were collecting like pages of this stuff and putting it up. So when I was at Big Idea working with Michael, the fact that I had had a class with him before and I knew what, what he liked and what he wanted. I remember when I was put in charge of having to design a, I'll have to break out some roughs from that show and show you guys, but I was put in charge of having to design a soup factory for the VeggieTale production, okay? And I had to do the exterior and the interior of it. And the exterior, I had this idea of an old abandoned Gothic church, which would look pretty cool. And the interior, there these like giant vats of soup going off a script. But before I even started, I think I must have had like 10, 15 pages of reference 
of factories, of giant vats. And it was hard because I couldn't just Google search like, you know, giant vats. You wouldn't get that. I had to look at something specific, like for example, an acid dipping company that dips metal in acid in these big vats because it makes the, the metal stronger once the acid coats the surface of it, right? So I, I had to get very specific, but I found this just great reference. And I remember um, Mike Naraki and Phil Vischer and then our art director, Joseph Pulich, looking at some of that reference, being like I'm just taking a Sharpie and checking it off and drawing arrows to the things that they like. So that was a huge part of, of working as a designer is providing all that information to them. So like on this, I looked at another another piece of turtle reference when I got stuck and I noticed the shell splits a little bit where the head comes out. So why not split it a little bit more and modify that a teeny bit, right? I mean, to me, that would be the smart thing to do. And I got to admit, I really like the round shape on this turtle with the tapered angles on the shell, opposites attracting, okay? And then I really enjoy, um, I'm thinking about like, like maybe rock or little mussels or something growing on the back. It wouldn't be mussels, but like little growth of little items. But that would be a great idea though if I did do the uh, a turtle from the sea. If I did that, it would be in my best interest then to have the turtle um, with like crustaceous mussels, or and crustaceous mussels, excuse me, with mussels on the back. But you know what I mean? Like little crustaceous bubble growths and stuff like that, you know? So again, you know, Reference is key, right? You know, always is, never changes. So important in everything that we do. So, reference. And that's the, the I think one of my pet peeves that works me with students sometimes is I'll come by and they just drew something and I'll go, and I could tell, you know, come on, I got 20 years of drawing on you. And not to mention I started drawing, you know, pretty heavily in seventh grade. Thank, thank you to Mr. Graber at Bernardo Yorba uh, middle school, okay, um, who taught us basics of perspective in seventh grade. That's right. You know, own it, Mr. Graber. You rule, you know. So, um, um, <laughs> and then I come by, I look at a student's piece, and I could tell they're like drawing the interior of a factory or they're drawing a character. And there's, I look down, there's no reference around them. They're not looking at anything. And I could tell there's like weaknesses in part of the design. And I go, where's your reference? Oh, well, I'm just using my phone. I'm like, no, that doesn't know how it works. You, you can't keep your reference. Your phone is like two by four inches if you have like the bigger iMac phone, right? You know, I mean, you need to have your reference printed out on sheets of paper in front of you where you can hold it up and you can pin it and look at it, come up with different ideas, okay? Ideation, you know, I, the process of elimination and ideas and taking something from a beginning phase to an end phase. That is what makes you a better artist and designer and it never ever changes, okay? It doesn't. It gets simpler as you get older, you know, but All right, sorry. I don't mean to be uh I'm just I sort of enjoy doing the drawing and then coming back and talking over cuz I find I concentrate a little bit better and while you guys are watching the drawing, I've noticed it allows me to entertain you a little bit more and allows me to talk about some different subject matters as I'm doing the voiceover. So this is my sea turtle version I'm going for. I love those curvy like feet that are very bendable. Um, I'm thinking his shell's a little lower to the ground so he could like hover down to like the, the ocean floor. And I, I wanna, I'm going back to that initial drawing that I had up there with lots of curves in it. So I like part of that idea. Let me have a hump, maybe a, a small hump and then another hump. Okay, sort of like that. And just trying to fit the whole thing in there. So, it's funny, because um, sometimes I'll do a sketch like this and it's just getting the idea out first. And then later on in the day, a couple hours later, I'll feel that urge to go in there and like really just carve into the shape and add a ton of, uh, really push the shapes and the design and add a more gestural feel to part of the drawing, you know? So, you know, for what I'm doing, trying to get there, um, I actually like this one quite a bit. There's, I have a couple shells in here that I like. So what's funny is that I would actually print these out and use them as a reference page. So when I'm drawing my turtle in a three quarter view, I immediately have all these different shells that I drew 
and I can go back and look at them and remember part of my thought process that was involved with how I was getting there, okay? And I'm trying to get more here on the, on the inside, I'm trying to counterbalance the curves and have more angular shapes here, a little bit more squared. I think that's a little bit more inviting with sort of those grooves in the middle and pathways, you know? So I um, think that might be, you know, opposites, right? Always opposites. Speaking of that, I thought I'd mention this. Um, I've been working with my counterpart at school. I have two new counterparts. And I'm going to see if I can interview them and show some of their work and talk about them with you guys. Because one of them is an artist by the name of Mike Sheehan, who is an absolutely amazing draftsman. And he also knows uh, the Holy Trinity of software. He does. He's worked professionally doing working for Disney Imagineering, consumer products, a lot of other type of designing. And then, and then of course, my other partner at school, Frank Guthrie, who is a Maya and 3D wizard and guru and also teaches ZBrush and, and just is an incredibly knowledgeable guy and also a very talented 2D artist as well. Um, you know, all, the three of us run sort of our digital art slash entertainment art program now. And one of the things that we're doing is as we are, we're going through this process called Six Year Review and we're trying to make the you know school and the world of technology is around us and we're trying to make a whole series of classes become online classes okay the only hiccup is is that we're trying to see if our district is going to endorse out-of-state tuition or not in my opinion an online class should be an online class and be available to people from around the world however though the way the school system works in collegiate education in the world of academia is um, you have to pay money f to go to school if you're from out of state or out of country. So I'm trying to, we're trying to figure out a way if we can keep the class value, which our class values are incredibly low, um, and I mean in terms of cost. Uh, my classes that you guys are watching here, like my character design class, um, it's $150 for 16 weeks, which is pretty unheard of, you know, especially after I worked at CGMA and some other schools, I know what people charge. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a business and that's how they make their money. And also they have to pay their instructors. But we work a little differently because we're paid by the magnificent and wonderful state of California. And um, they pay us and we get as many students as we can because we're responsible for your training and education and to push you forward into a what we call a CTE, California Technical Education, which means you get out and you earn a job and you become a contributing member to society by earning money, okay? Which means in different fields of animation, gaming, electronics, whatever, right? So um, in that context, we were changing and adding a whole bunch of our, cat, our classes to become online classes. Um, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to solve that and get that done. But those of you out there, I know I get a lot of comments and a lot of, uh, some people find my, my work email and they send me messages and stuff, which is, Cool, but a lot of people are asking me, you know, some basics about the cost of what online program would be. So, um, at the most expensive, it would be out of state tuition, which would be six hundred and fifty dollars, I believe, for um, a non-resident, foreign resident. But for 16 weeks, to me, that would be totally worth it. I still think that's affordable. Anyway, you guys can make that decision, but I wanted to let you know we're working on that. So pretty soon, we should have some class offerings coming up. I'd say probably in the next year, maybe. I know it seems like a long time, but schools work very slowly. In the next year to year and a half, a bunch of the lectures and the things you're seeing here are going to be related to online classes that we will be able to teach from you know our homes or whatever so anyway just thought i'd leave you guys with that final note so here's my final imagery this is what i have and i like it i'm happy i have some cool designs and i like what i have done here and um, this gives me a stepping stone to work on so keep on drawing keep plugging away and thanks for watching guys take care and have a good one bye bye